Hi, my name is Peter Defty, and I'm the developer of the Optimized Fat Metabolism Program, or OFM for short. Now, you've probably seen me doing these videos, and I always talk about how you have virtually limitless energy on board, on your body, and that you've been sold and told this idea that you need to take in all these calories. Well, today, folks, I have got a video that, that my team and I have developed where we're going to walk you through that process of how your body actually does have not only those calories, but how it taps into them, how you can tap into your fat through beta oxidation, how you use your glycogen stores sustainably, and also how your liver makes ketones and even glucose from fat to bridge that gap and to give you the, the performance you need so that you can not only train and compete at the highest level, but do so in a way where you reach your health potential as well as your performance potential. Now, I'm not suggesting for a second that things like gel, shot blocks, liquid nutrition, MCT oils, slow carbs, all these products out there have a place. However, the sole focus on this external calorie feeding has resulted in a lot of misconceptions and has actually downregulated our body's ability to tap into those limitless energy reserves that we have on board. So, this is a little bit of a long video, but stick with us, pay attention, and I think you're going to come away with a whole new understanding of how your physiology works and how we are designed to perform without all this stuff that we've been sold and told. So let's dive in. So the first slide, we're going to talk about the energy substrates. And very quickly, we have ketones. And, and this is beta-hydroxybutyrate, the darling of the keto um, movement. And they come in at 22 ATP. That's 22 ATP net generation. And of course, after that, we have glucose, which is the darling of high carb and, and very well studied and very well known in performance sports nutrition. And glucose burns very quickly and comes in at 29 ATP. Now, third, we have fat, fatty acids, and we're going to use palmitic acid as the um, example because it's a 16 carbon uh, fatty acid that's very commonly circulated in the body. Now, look at this. 129 ATP. We're talking about nearly a five-fold increase in energy generation of a fatty acid molecule versus a molecule of ketones or a molecule of glucose. So this is the energy that's really going to supply your base load when you're fat adapted. It's going to be that limitless aerobic energy supply that, that's going to carry you through your workouts, your competitions in ways that um, these other substrates can't. And very quickly, I want to go through the pathways. And the start and end of this little part is that all roads lead to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the molecule that gets fed into the Krebs cycle to generate energy. So all these, these substrates, um, ketones, glucose, fats, get converted into acetyl-CoA via these pathways. So for the fats, they're coming from your fatty acids via a four-step process called beta-oxidation. And you got to get beta-oxidation going, and it takes a while, and it's, it's a more involved process. It's not quick, but once that engine is up and running, it's powerful, and it delivers this limitless supply of energy. So for your aerobic fat-burning baseload, this is what we want to really focus on. And then you got your liver, and your liver is actually able to produce both ketones and glucose. And that glucose um, is does not is not coming from catabolizing muscle protein. This is a unique part about being fat adapted that the liver, um, ironically and co counterintuitively, produces both ketones and it will produce glucose as needed 
to meet that metabolic need, especially if you're pushing or hammering and pushing your threshold or into anaerobic spectrum, um, the liver can actually make a significant amount of glucose. And that glucose goes and becomes acetyl-CoA in the same way that your muscle glycogen can also be converted into glucose and sent to um, the Krebs cycle and, and converted to acetyl-CoA and in, in and away it goes. So now we're going to move to the three different states that your body um, can be in when you're doing exercise. And the first state is what we call the excess glucose state from um, when you are on a high carb diet, the high carb sports nutrition one. And I probably should call it the excess and um, scarce uh, state because you go in these swings of having glucose and not having glucose. And what happens here is, is we, it's hallmarked by high insulin levels, high glucose, no circulating ketones because you've turned the liver off, as you can see by the graph, and you've turned up that, that pathway of glucose from glycogen while you've turned down your fatty acids. Now, one thing people need to know is if they say you're a carb burner or whatever, you're burning carbs, you're always going to be burning some fat because fat is critical. Fat metabolism is critical to all physiological processes. So um, it's not that you completely turn off your fat metabolism, but you turn it way down and restrict it. It's not optimized. And that's what we want to do is optimize fat metabolism for both energy delivery and for metabolism, for health. And we've turned off the liver because there's so much glucose and circulation that we need to get that down. So there's this signal that says we don't need this uh, these other energy sources. Now the second um, panel is the keto panel. And this is a state of high efficiency and it's a state of conservation. This is what keto is. Um, it's a very efficient and very conservation oriented state. So we look at this as very practical and very healthy, but it's also got some issues when you're talking about outright physical performance. And it's hallmarked by low insulin, high insulin sensitivity, and clinical ketone levels. And this is, um, this is very important to know because clinical ketone levels are what you see in somebody who's in a keto state and everybody's chasing their ketones. But this is not what you see in a fat adapted athlete. Okay, one of the problems about prolonged deep keto is because you're not burning a lot of glucose, your body says, well, I don't need to have a lot of this pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme around because I'm not processing a lot of pyruvate, which is uh, a breakdown product of glucose. That's the precursor before pyruvate converts into acetyl CoA. So your body says, well, I'm not processing a lot of glucose, so I don't need a lot of this enzyme. So it downregulates it. And this is one of the main factors in why deep keto doesn't allow you to have the performance benefits. Because when you're pushing into your aerobic threshold and anaerobic levels, you're actually um, going to need some glucose and you're going to need it real quickly. But if you don't have that pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme available in large quantities, you're very limited in how quickly you can access that sugar. And this is why keto, or this is one of the reasons why keto, most people notice that they just don't have that extra gear they need for the performance end. Um, so that's that's the keto state, and that's why you have this limitation, is, is you've turned down the, the glucose tank and turned up the fat tank and the ketone tank. And certainly you can go all day and not have to eat anything, but you just don't have access to that quick, immediate energy need for that performance edge. And finally, the third panel is the OFM panel. And, and what we do with OFM is we balance the three systems to try to optimize all of them. So the, all these different pathways, fatty acids from fat, 
ketones and glucose from the liver and glucose from your glycogen tank all are readily open and available and that the hormonal enzymatic pathways needed to process them and get them to acetyl-CoA are all in place so that you can access all your internal energy quickly and have it for your performance. This is why you have performance on OFM. And this is why you, um, when you add those strategic carbs during a race, they actually work because you're putting those on top of this big base of, of internal energy generation. Now, OFM state is a little different from keto state because it's, it's still marked by a low insulin and, and high insulin sensitivity uh, level because we do work at keeping insulin low and insulin sensitivity high. And we want that insulin sensitivity because we want insulin to do what it's meant to do. And that's drive sugar into your cells quickly when you need it for performance. Now, an interesting part about the OFM state is unlike keto, the ketone levels are subclinical. Athletes very often uh, worry because they're not in keto. They're not in ketosis. They're subclinical. They're producing slightly ketones, but you know not much. Yet when they go out for runs or races and they're doing them for hours on practically no calories, a lot of those calories, a lot of that energy they're burning is coming from beta oxidation and ketosis. And their bodies are actually probably better at making ketones than a sedentary person. And this leads me to the context. It's important for all you listeners to understand that the body of keto, the body of nutritional ketosis is based on sedentary and metabolically compromised subjects. So we're talking about people who are sedentary, which everybody gets. But remember, a lot of the keto studies are done on people with type 2 diabetes, Angelman syndrome, epilepsy, um, any number of, of conditions where a ketogenic diet has, has uh, shown efficacy. It's generally done on people that are either sedentary or metabolically compromised. So how does that apply to you, the performance-oriented um, athlete who's not metabolically compromised? Well, it doesn't. And that's why when we see, see these lower subclinical levels, we don't worry too much about it because we feel that, that your body now prefers the ketones over the glucose. And we see um, relatively high fasting glucose levels in these athletes and you know, slight but subclinical ketones um, in these same athletes. So that's sort of the punchline about it is the context that you are a performance athlete and you're you're about tapping into your internal supplies if you're looking at fat adaptation and to optimize that. And so the subclinical ketones are, are just due to, to the fact that your body is just very efficient and good at processing them and that it prefers them over glucose. So this this is a good example of how your body is meant to work. We're talking about your internal energy the and how OFM works to get your body to be able to recruit all those internal energy supp supplies so that you can reach your best performance. I hope you've enjoyed and learned a lot from this video and how these graphics we've developed have given you a fundamental understanding of how you have the physiology and the tools to tap into your own limitless energy and how developing the potential for that first is going to allow you to reach your health and performance potential. If you'd like to learn more, click on the links below to learn more about how you can optimize your fat metabolism to reach your health and performance potential. Thank you. We look forward to working with you. Thank you.